two more ransomware attacks, what can we learn from them? John, I hear you. there's another ransomware story you have for us. Uh, yeah, actually, I've got a couple of ransomware stories. Um, so kind of uh, piggybacking on, I guess, a lot of the press around the uh, Colonial Pipeline incident that a lot of people have been talking about, you know, for the past few weeks now. Ransomware attacks aren't new, and there's been a couple of others that have been reported recently. I thought we'd talk about them and maybe some um, additional, you know, best practices or recommendations uh, around you know, how to strategize to prepare for a ransomware attack or to get yourself in a position where you might not be as badly impacted. Um, anyway, the first story is uh, there's a Norwegian company, and this is actually going to be this whole, my whole segment here is basically a test of how well I can pronounce various words because I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this right, <laughs> but um, there's a Norwegian company called Volue, V-O-L-U-E, um, and they provide technology and um, uh, they provide technology to like energy and infrastructure firms um, in the country. And they're basically kind of like in, more in the infrastructure type space. So they were hit with a ransomware attack uh, recently uh, back on May 4th or 5th, I think it was. And um, it, it resulted in them having to shut down the software applications that provide the infrastructure uh, for the water and wastewater facilities in 200 uh, municipalities in, Nor uh, in Norway. So, um, you know, that's about 85% of the country's population, they estimate, which is, you know, pretty substantial. Wow. So if you can, you know, impact the water and, you know, some might even say the wastewater is a little bit more important than getting your water, getting rid yeah. of the wastewater, uh, that could be, you know, pretty significant um, uh, impact, you know, on a population. So this particular um, ransomware was called Ryuk. Again, another pronunciation challenge for me. I've heard it pronounced Ryuk as well as Ryuk. Um, it's a Japanese word that means death note. It's been around for a long time, this, this ransomware, at least a few years now. Um, and it's, you know, fair, it's seen a lot of popularity um, in the ransomware groups in terms of being utilized. So then, Additionally, we have another story uh, across the pond again over in Ireland where their health service executive, um, which is basically their health care and social, secure, social services across all of Ireland, uh, they had to shut down all their IT systems as a precaution in order to protect the network uh, from a ransomware attack that occurred about a week ago, I think it was, um, sometime last week. Um, and, uh, you know, as when they investigated this, it appears that it was uh, primarily on uh, impacting their centralized servers, not the hospital equipment itself, uh, in terms of what was being uh, held and uh, held it at ransom. Their emergency services continue to operate, but they, they expect some delays and a lot of other things, you know, uh, test results and maybe some, um, you know, scheduled appointments might be delayed and whatnot, uh, but still, you know, it, it, you know, significant impact, um, you know, to the population there since that is, you know, a large provider of healthcare uh, in Ireland. This particular uh, ransomware variant is known as Conti, uh, that's C-O-N-T-I, uh, which has also been around for um, uh, a while. And in recent months, it's been, you know, really, more popular, it seems like, or I shouldn't say popular, but they've been uh, seeing a lot of success lately with the Conti ransomware. Um, the Conti group has been known to use, uh, as well as a lot of other ransomware groups, especially Colonial Pipeline, uh, of using the technique of double extortion, where, you know, not only do they hold their machines and services at ransom uh, by, you know, locking them up, um, by installing some malware component on there. But in addition, they will, um, and then asking for a ransom to unlock it, but they will download or exfiltrate lots of data, um, usually uh, like PCI data uh, or spy data related to that customer base that they might have. And they threaten to release that information, you know, to the public if they don't uh, comply and pay the ransom. So it's kind of like, 
you know, two ways of holding them at ransom. So again, uh, the thing I thought was interesting about these two before I give you recommendations is, you know, Colonial Pipeline, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, critical infrastructure, piping fuel and gas across the country. The value one was, you know, again, a critical infrastructure type of service where they're providing a service of either providing water or taking wastewater away from the population. Any disruption of that, you know, is significant. So they're, these ransomware groups are pretty smart about targeting, uh, you know, businesses that don't really have a good tolerance for downtime. And then the third one, you know, the healthcare provider in Ireland, again, healthcare has been traditionally seen as a target for ransomware. And uh, that is, again, another type of service that is not really, certainly not very tolerant to any sort of disruption. You know, you don't want to disrupt healthcare, um, especially emergency services, that would be uh, serious. Not that that was the case here. So, um, uh, you know, I guess one last thing before I kind of maybe carry out some thoughts to, some recommendations that we've talked about on the show before, I'm sure, uh, with respect to ransomware is make sure you have a really good uh, information security program in place in your company. And even if you're a small business, you can probably put something together. The smaller the business you are, the less data you might have in some scenarios. So it might be easy to kind of like figure out where all your critical information is stored, have a good inventory of your systems, uh, know what your security controls are and how to use them. Um, and then uh, I'd also say make sure you have a good user education program because usually in most of these cases with ransomware, uh, it's a lot of times it's the result of somebody uh, clicking on a link in an email um, or getting tricked in some way into installing malware, and that gives them a foothold. Uh, the other thing I would recommend is um, there's a lot of recommendations. There's just things off the top of my head is – Make sure you have a good program around applying security patches as soon as they're available for all of your software as well as hardware. So don't neglect um, your hardware. So like firmware and things of that nature for embedded devices uh, that might be in your in, in your footprint for your business are something you want to make sure you, you address on a regular basis. Um, the other thing about uh, like access methods is have a good two-factor solution in place for authentication because then at least if somebody does get a foothold on a machine, uh, maybe they get the um, the credentials for the person one time, having a good two-factor solution will help kind of limit their ability to move laterally around throughout the rest of your business, hopefully. Um, certainly it will be better than a single password, uh, which might be reused in lots of places. And then, um, I guess the last thing I was going to mention is that, you know, have a good backup and disaster disaster recovery program in place, uh, especially for a larger business. And um, make sure you practice, you know, implementing those procedures of you know, maybe a, a controlled failure to make sure or simulated ransomware events. So you can kind of test that process out to make sure that when it really happens, you know, God forbid it does. But if it does, you're at least prepared. You've gone through the motions. You know how to recover uh, without having to pay some exorbitant ransom. So um, I guess that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in that story. Um, but again, I just thought it was interesting to see, you know, a similar types of targeting going on with infrastructure and critical services being targeted that, that don't really have a good tolerance for uh, downtime. Yeah, John, those are really good recommendations. I'm just curious in the article, did it say what the reaction of the companies were? You didn't mention. At least for the uh, Ireland Health Services executive, they were, um, there is a ransom that has been made to them that they have not disclosed, at least that I saw, how much the ransom is for, you know, what they're being told that they should pay. Uh, And they've indicated that they are not going to pay. The uh, HSC, uh, Health Services executive in Ireland, uh, seem to have a pretty good response plan in place and were able to recover, you know, moderately well from the uh, event so that they don't need to, um, you know, pay a ransom in this particular situation. They said that they're not going to pay a ransom. Uh, that was their 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 statement. And um, with respect to the volume, I don't recall if they said um, – you know, what the ransom was or whether they're willing to pay it. 
Um, I'm hoping that they have a plan not to. You know, we don't really want to encourage this type of behavior, obviously. Um, so that's why, you know, hopefully people are prepared for this type of event and, and don't end up having to pay a ransom. Um, because, you know, if they're successful, it's just going to continue to, to be a tactic that these, these bad actors use. Obviously. And, and even with the recovery and even with practicing, it's not going to be instantaneous, right? Companies have to realize that even trying to restore might take a little bit of time and um, hopefully there's enough resilience in your system that, that you know, you can um, manage or, or only have high availability on the parts that you absolutely critically need while you try to restore the others. Um, but I think the idea that you practice this and you really have a, a well laid out plan, even for smaller companies, makes so much sense because this is not just a, a once in a lifetime occurrence. It's really happening um, quite frequently, sadly. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. And, you know, I saw some other studies recently um, around, it, it was kind of interesting. I think it was on CNBC or somebody had uh, done a presentation of how much, what, like, based on industry sectors, um, what the average uh, ransom has been in these different sectors. And um, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say exactly, but telecom was way up there um, <laughs> uh, of what their, their pain point would be in terms of how, what, what they would pay as a result of uh, a ransomware event. Uh, I think they were actually the number one, like the highest in terms of um, average ransom that had been uh, had, had been seen, uh, but you know these other service industries like this um, are definitely in scope. So, and, and sometimes people don't even realize how important you know their computer systems are to their daily functioning business. So even in like businesses like retail and whatnot, you know any kind of disruption, um, you know is really important and could really hamper your business. And like you said, it can. It, you shouldn't expect that I can flip a switch and recover from this in a day or two. It will probably be, you know, a week to several weeks to recover uh, and restore it to, you know, the way you were prior. So it's something that you definitely want to have a plan in place so that you don't um, waste any time trying to figure out a plan uh, of how you're going to respond, uh, which can take, you know, several days to a week just to even think of like, what is my strategy here? and um, instead you'll be able to hit the ground running.